In this video, we're going to move into fixing our samples because not everything is going to be perfect right out of the gate, but there are some great tools within Contact that allow you to manipulate and tweak your samples so that at the end of the day, it makes your samples very professional and polished so that even if there are a little inconsistencies with the recording that you want to change or remove, you can accomplish that. So there is a sample that I want to show you first uh, that is it's really good, but it's not quite perfect yet, but we're going to fix it up and I'm going to show you how. So take a quick listen to this sample. So we have a little bit of an issue with that sample. I don't like how it starts and I don't have another recording to swap it out with. So I'm going to use some more tools within contact to make my library as good as it can be. And I'm going to move over into the wave editor. It just appears right here on the bottom. If I select a sample in the mapping editor, it appears as well in the wave editor. And that's really awesome. So this is a visual representation of my recording of that D that the choir sang. And if you listen closely, it kind of has a little bit of a scoop in the beginning. It doesn't start on D right away. It kind of scoops up from a lower note. So what I need to do is I need to pull in and to set the start time, all you have to do is drag the green start flag to wherever you need that sample to begin. That's a little better. Let me see if I can go back a little bit. I'm going to try to find the best spot. Okay, that seems pretty good. Now I'm going to try to get rid of that heart attack because it sounds a little clipped right now. So I'm going to navigate over into the sample editor where I can add a fade in. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select an area and I'm going to click fade in and boom. It added a fade in my sample. Now, if you look over here, contact won't actually edit your original files. They'll create copies, which is amazing because you don't want to destroy something that you spent a long time recording and potentially lose files. So now I have a fade in and it sounds really great. Yeah, that's going to sound a lot better. I'm going to adjust this fade in just slightly. So I'm going to click undo and I'm going to just try it one more time. I actually don't like that. I prefer the shorter fade. So I'm going to pull this back, click fade in one more time. And let's see what that sounds like. That is perfect in my opinion. I really like that. So I'm going to continue this process of dragging in my samples into the mapping editor and then using the wave editor to make sure that they all sound exactly the way I want. So I'm going along, I'm adding my samples to the mapping editor, and I'm really liking what I'm hearing. But this is real life, and I'm trying to anticipate the problems that you're going to have. So I'm going to show all the problems that are coming up when I'm making this library. So one of them is that I kind of just don't like this sample anymore. And it could be for whatever reason. Maybe it wasn't played as well as you hoped, or the singer was out of tune, or maybe you just don't think it fits in your library anymore. And that's okay because there's a really great feature in contact where let's say I don't want to use this sample anymore on the E. What I can actually do is I could delete that and I can use my well-recorded sample from one note below and I can pitch shift it up onto that E as well. It takes the same sample and it uses contacts amazing pitch shifting algorithm to create a new sample for that key. So here is the new note. That's an E using the sample for D sharp. And it sounds amazing. You can't even tell that it was pitch shifted. 
So that's what I'm going to do because I feel like that will be the best for the library. I'm going to bring in the start time just a tad, go into the sample editor, add a fade in. Oops, nothing selected. I'm going to add a fade in right here. Boom, let's take a listen. Did a horrible job on that fade in. So I'm going to click undo. I'm going to do a better job this time. <laughs> click fade in. Perfect. All right, we're starting to get the beginnings of a choir sample library. So I'm going to continue to add all my samples in. So I'm going to cut ahead in the video to when I'm finished with this and we'll move on to the next step of creating this contact library. Okay, so we're back. We're about to drag the last few samples over and I forgot to tell you a little trick. When you're dragging multiple samples, which I don't think I've done yet, if you drag it up near the top, it'll expand how many keys it'll take up. And if you drag it down near the bottom, it'll limit it to just one. So I, it's, it's a little finicky because then you can get down into zero territory, but that is just a neat little trick when dragging multiple samples. So now I have all of my samples arranged one per key, sometimes two if I have variations of the same note that I want to set on different velocities. And then like I mentioned earlier, I have one that extends over two notes on the keyboard because I prefer to use contacts pitch shift function to share that sample over two notes and it sounds really great. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the rest of the series. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.